Well, but a da, Kaiso, Maud, Ichigid, Dioch, Ichigid, Sinamino, Ani Borema, thank you all for joining us this morning. So, this is the second press conference the leader of Plaid Cymru and I have held since we signed the cooperation agreement at the end of last year. Today, we will be offering an update on the radical programme of work we will be undertaking as part of the agreement to ensure everyone is able to afford to live <coughs> in their local community, whether that's buying or renting a home. We have a shared ambition for Wales to be a nation of thriving communities, a country where people do not have to leave in order to find good and rewarding work, and a country where people want to come to visit and to live. Tourism, we know, is vital to our economy, but having too many holiday properties and second homes concentrated in particular areas, particularly when they are empty for much of the year, that does not make for healthy communities. It doesn't make for prices which are affordable to local people in that local housing market. Now, this is much is clear. There is no single or simple solution to these issues. And any action we take, we know, must be fair. We are not about intending, sorry, we're not about creating any unintended consequences which could destabilise the wider housing market or make it harder for people to rent or buy. Now, as a result of all of this, we have already started work to help ease the pressure on communities with large numbers of second homes. We're building 20,000 low carbon social homes for rent over the course of this Senate term, and we're investing millions of pounds to bring empty homes back into use for social housing. We've introduced new powers already for councils to increase council tax premiums on second homes, and we've changed the rules on holiday lets so owners and operators make a fair contribution to their local communities. The impact of these and other interventions will be properly tested in Duivor, and this is the first pilot of its kind anywhere in the United Kingdom. Today, we're setting out further details of our programme. It covers a wide range of policy areas, uh, and Adam is now going to begin to set out some of these in more detail. Diolch am awr, brif yn i dog, a bore da i chi gyd. Fe nethwn ni am rwymo i ddefnyddio ystod o fesurau y mae streth cynllunio a rheoli eiddo er mwyn mynd i'r afel ac ail gallu a llai anffordiadwy ac i wneud hynny ar fyrder. Rwy'n falch iawn o allu cyflwyno'r pecyn o fesurau bwriadus sydd wedi datblygu o gynlyniad i'r cydweithio adeiladol rhwng Plaid Cymru a'r Llywodfeth yn y maes hwn. Yn ôl i bawb yr hawl i fyw adra, sef y gallu i fyw a gweithio yn y cymunedau lle cawsant a'i magu. As the Prifunid of Senedd, by working together, we have already secured the support of the Senedd uh, to increase the maximum level of council tax uh, premiums uh, local authorities can raise on second and empty homes from 100% to 300% from next April. We've also taken steps to close the loophole, as was referred to in the cooperation agreement, which allows second home owners not to pay tax on their properties. Uh, there are early indications that these changes are already making a practical difference on the ground by freeing up more homes for local people to rent or to buy. Today, we are announcing the way forward and the package of measures that will together begin to address the injustices in our housing system and make a real difference to people and communities right across our nation. Mar mais cynllunio yn un maes lle nad yw i botensial i'r reoli'r system eiddo wedi weredu hyd yma. Mae lefel yr ymatebion i'r ymgynghoriad 1,600 a phedwar o ymatebion un o'r uchaf erioed o safbwynt cynllunio yn hanes Llywodraeth Cymru yn dangos lefel y diddordeb cyhoeddus mewn creu newid. Gallwn ni gyhoeddi heddiw 
a byddwn yn symud ymlaen i gyflwyno tri dosbarth defnydd cynllunion newydd erbyn diwedd yr haf. Pryd gartref, ail gartref a lleti gwylio, gwyliau tymor byr. Byddwn hefyd yn galluogi awdidodau cynllunio lleol a'u gwneud yn ofynnol i gael caniatad cynllunio er mwyn newid defnydd o un dosbarth i'r llall ac i reoli defnydd datblygiadau tai newydd yn well. Byddwn hefyd yn cyflwyno newidiadau i bolis i cynllunio cenedlaethol bydd yn caniatau awdidodau cynllunio lleol i reoli nifer yr ail gartrefi a chartrefi gwyliau mewn unrhyw gymuned bydd yn cynnwys y gallu i osod cap o fewn eu hardaloedd. There has been an exponential growth in the short-term uh, holiday let sector in recent years. This is not unique to Wales. It was reported last week that the number of holiday uh, lets in, in England rose by 40% in the three years to 2021. Holiday lets are commonplace in many of our residential areas. This can produce pressure on the availability of housing for local people, creating challenges for the sustainability of communities. We have a regulatory framework in place for private rental accommodation and other tourism accommodation, but not currently for short-term holiday lets. We can therefore announce that we will be introducing a statutory licensing scheme, which will make it a requirement to obtain a license to operate a short-term holiday let. This will help control the housing system and level the playing field for tourism accommodation providers. We will consult on the detailed pro uh, policy proposals in the autumn. Makid weithio, rhwng pleidiau ar angen i weithredu yn gyflym i geisio gwneud gwahaniaeth ymarferol a chyflwyno datrysiadau ar unwaith i fethiannau sydd wedi bod deoli estegaudau yn y farchnad dai yn gofyn am gyfaddawd a phragmatiaeth. Mae angen cydnabod bod y newidiadau rydyn ni'n eu cyhoeddi heddiw yn gamau sy'n mynd ar afel i'r afel ar rai o symptomau gweithaf y gyfundrem tai bresennol. O hyn ymlaen, mae angen i ni droi yn gylygon yn gynyddol at y problemau dyfnach strwythurol gyda'r system tai ac eiddo. Felly, wrth gyflwyno'r pecyn heddiw, rhaid pwysleisio bod ymrwymiadau eraill y cytundeb cydweithio, a papur gwyn ar ddedd eiddo a renti teg yr ymrwymiad i greu cwmni adeiladu cenedlaethol unos i gyd yn allweddol i fynd i graidd yr argyfwng tai. A gallaf garanhau, ein bod yn symud ymlaen gyda'r un momentum gyda'r gwaith yn ei gyfanrwydd y tu hwnt i'r pecyn penodol hwn, a bydd y cyhoeddiadau pellach i ddilyn yn nes mlaen eleni. The Prifynydog will now give you some further details about land transaction tax and local authority mortgages. Yes, thank you, uh, Adam. So on to two final strands in this package of measures which we are announcing today. So we recently asked people for their views about making changes to land transaction tax. That's the tax paid when buying a house. There are currently two sets of rates for residential property. The standard rate, with increase, which increase with the price of property, and higher rates, which are an additional 4% on top of the main rates when buying a second or additional properties. We asked people about their views about varying land transaction tax rates locally in areas where there are the highest numbers of second homes and holiday lets. And there was very strong support in that consultation exercise for taking action of that sort. So we will now work with local authorities to develop a national framework so that they can put to us proposals for increased land transaction rates for second homes and holiday lets, which they can then apply in their local areas. And the Finance Minister has written to all local authorities in Wales today so that work can begin on those proposals. Now, some of these measures are about making access to the housing market fairer, Others are about a better balance between second homes and holiday lets in local communities. But we also want to do more to help local people onto the property ladder. The Welsh Language Housing Communities Plan 
which will be published in September, will include proposals to give local people a fair chance in the housing market. And in that context, we are investigating the possibility of reintroducing local authority mortgages here in Wales, particularly aimed at first time buyers. In the context of the cost of living crisis, backing from a local authority would help people access those mortgages with a smaller deposit and with greater affordability at the heart of those arrangements. Uh, so, Diolch Galon, Ichi Gid am Rando, uh, Heddy, uh, we'll now turn as ever to take questions from journalists uh, and over today, to begin with, to Catherine Hard-Jones at BBC Wales. Diolch am Rando, Ichi, ask Ashley Nigalar Tebion and Gymra Gacken Seisneg, Os Gorchum Dda. Um, can I look at the um, strategy licensing scheme for short-term holiday lets? Uh, just a bit more detail about how that will work exactly. Do you expect, uh, how do you expect people might qualify for a license? Will there be quotas in certain areas? Does that mean the people who are currently supporting in their income and so on by doing this might not be able to in the future? A bit more detail about the thinking behind that, please. Well, we will draw on the statutory licensing scheme from the experience we have already with Rent Smart Wales. So we already have a system in Wales where all landlords have to be registered. They register with Rent Smart Wales, and we're confident that this has helped already to raise standards for tenants uh, and landlords. And we expect a licensing scheme to do the same for the visitor economy uh, and for visitor accommodation. But the licensing scheme will help raise standards and it will further develop the tourism offer that we have here uh, in Wales. And there's nothing unusual about this. These sort of schemes are very standard uh, in the UK and further afield. Having committed to a statutory licensing scheme, of course, we will work with the sector in the way we do in Wales. And there'll be detailed discussions with people who work in this field now over the coming uh, weeks to make sure we design the licensing scheme in a way that rewards those best actors in the system. That's what the licensing system does. It makes sure that those people who do all the right things are not undercut or disadvantaged by people who maybe don't operate to the same standards. And it will offer a guarantee to people coming to Wales that the accommodation they will be booking will be licensed by a public authority. So, nin just an tani ar pet ni wedi neud yn barod, yma yn Cymru y cynthyn si Dani uh, i bobl sy'n uh, rhoi uh, tai i rentio yn y sector uh, preifet. Ni'n tynnu ar pethau sy'n gyfredinol, ni just uh, yn y dynes unedig ond dros y byd. Ac y pwrpas y cynllun yw i codi safonau uh, yn y maes uh, ac i rhoi Hader i bobl sy'n dod i Gymru bydd safon, uh, beth maen nhw'n talu amdano, bydd y safon hwnna uh, yn uh, uwch ac allwn, ni, ac allwn nhw gwybod, os mae o rhywun yn rhoi, uh, peth ymlaen i, i renti uh, dros yr haf er enghraifft, bydd hwnna ar y rhestr genedlaethol bydd dani yma yng Nghymru. Ac uh, fel mae'r prif unidog uh, um, uh, newydd weid, wrth gwrs i ni yn gallu uh, tynnu uh, um, arbrofiad yn rhyngwladol lle mae cynlluniau tebyg uh, o reileiddio ar gyfer y sector yma wedi cyflwyno uh, a draws Ewrop a dydy gwir ar, ar, ar draws y, y byd. Um, a, ac uh, yn aml iawn er mwyn ymateb i... Uh, uh, yr un problem ein i'n trafod heddiw, lle mae yna ardaloedd sydd yn uh, wynebu uh, pwysau cynyddol o herwydd o'r uh, uh, dwristiaeth um, sydd â goblygiadau i'r farchnadau ac i gynelydwyedd y cymunedau yn gyffredinol. Felly ni'n gallu tynnu hefyd uh, ar y profiad hynny wrth uh, i ni uh, cyflwyno uh, yr argymhellion draft, wrth gwrs byddwn ni'n ymgynghori ar ni nhw, felly gyd o'r manylion uh, dy chi um, um, newydd godi nawr ac rai eraill, wrth gwrs yn gallu bod yn, yn, yn craidd uh, yr ymgynghoriad yn ni wrth i ni uh, dynnu ar y profiad 
uh, o fewn Cymru mewn sectorau eraill fel yr Prynu Dwy'r Gweidion hefyd uh, ar yr ardaloedd yn ni sydd wedi wneud yn union beth i'n bwriad i ni. Uh, so, uh, as the First Minister said, we're not just able to draw upon uh, relevant experience from the regulatory uh, framework from, for want of a better term, adjacent uh, uh, sectors and contexts, but also we're able to draw upon uh, the experience of, of other jurisdictions, other uh, nations, regions, uh, uh, localities across the world that have introduced a, a statutory licensing scheme uh, of the type that we're proposing. Um, many of them uh, not just uh, addressing the issues in terms of uh, 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 quality of tourism accommodation, but also the, the pressures uh, that uh, this can, uh, uh, that over tourism can represent in, in, in some communities in terms of uh, local housing affordability and the sustainability of, of communities. And so we're, we will be able to draw upon uh, that experience, how other nations, regions and localities uh, have designed those licensing schemes uh, and uh, then obviously consult on the basis of detailed proposals in due course. Catherine. And while we have you both uh, together, I wonder if I can ask you about Senedd reform. Um, there is a lot of concern around the proposed voting system for a bigger Senedd agreed between yourselves, um, that it's complex, there's a lack of a personal link and accountability between elected members and their constituencies under the new system. Um, can I ask you both to explain why you think that this is the best system for electing Senedd members, despite those concerns. And also, um, specifically uh, to you, First Minister, there have been calls for you to remain as Labour leader beyond the next Senedd election, Mark Drake, but to see this all through. Will you now be staying on? Uh, well, dear uh, Vaur, Catherine, so uh, I think both of the criticisms that you have mentioned actually uh, don't stand up to examination. Uh, this is the simplest form of election. Uh, in the current system, you have to turn up at the polling booth, you have to vote twice. Uh, and we know that many people are, are uncertain as to what the difference is between the first ballot paper they get and the second ballot paper they get. In the system that we have agreed for the 2026 elections, you'll have one vote and you go and cast it. I don't think it could be simpler uh, for the, the citizen than the system that we have agreed on. And I think the constituency link uh, issue is very much uh, overstate it. Uh, in fact, uh, the regions that people vote on now will be smaller in the new system uh, than they are currently. It will be two parliamentary constituencies brought together. There will be more than one member representing that, but we're absolutely used to this in Wales. When I was first elected as a councillor on South Glamorgan County Council, I represented an area with five councillors, all representing it. Uh, and it is just perfectly possible in a practical way for people to organise the way they carry out their duties and for members of the public to know who they would choose to go to. So I think that the system that we have agreed between us offers simplicity, clarity uh, for the voter, but also will give people a choice that in the area, if they would prefer to go to a particular person who represents them for whatever reason, they will be able uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, as I said on uh, Saturday, it's flattering, of course, when people think that you should stay uh, longer. Uh, all of this will be accomplished in this Senate term. The detailed work of making sure that the agreement that we have struck and has been uh, agreed to by both our parties is translated into a bill that will appear on the floor of the Senate that's work for this Senate term, and I'm looking forward very much uh, to getting stuck in with others to making sure that we make that happen in as effective way as possible. So just either way, and and for us, do you want to be a system now with and gumleth, the bubble, and for Marni, my hotel glear the bubble. Do you want in blade lights? Be da bubble, my gumleth dot and fly in other systems. He done a him hin o bryd. A pa mae bobl yn ddweud ni'n mynd i torri a peth yna srwng bobl ti'n sefyll a bobl ti'n pleidleisio dwi ddim yn cytuno dy hwnna a hefyd. Ni'n profiadol dros ben yma yng Nghymru i redeg system fel yna. Dwi wedi cael y profiad yn personol pan oeddwn ni 
yn uh, aelod o'r Cyngor De Morganwg. Uh, mae'n rhoi fwy o hyblygrwydd i bobl, a mae hwnna'n rhywbeth uh, dda, ond mae'r system yn un glir uh, i bobl diall uh, hefyd. Uh, ac uh, yn personol, uh, fel dwi wedi uh, dweud, uh, dwi'n mynd i uh, bwrw mlaen, gyda y gwaith caled, sydd da ni nawr i troi uh, cytundeb mewn i'r mynylion, sydd mynd i fod ar wyneb y bil, ni'n mynd i rhoi o flaen y senedd, ond uh, rhyw bryd ar ôl hynny, a uh, bydd cyfle i rhywun arall a uh, wneud uh, uh, y gwaith dwi'n wneud heddi. Wel, uh, yn y lle cyntaf, um, mae, mae hwn yn, yn gam uh, anhygoel y bositif i mi'n i, mi I gymryd gyda'n democratiaeth ni. Uh, mae clafu yr hen system cyntaf i'r felyn first past the post yn, yn gymaint o gam ymlaen. Gadi ni ddathu hwnna uh, yng Nghymru. A, a bod ni'n symud tuag at system sydd uh, a, a, ar sail uh, system o gynrychiolaeth cyfartalog yn, yn, yn llwyr. Um, beth sydd gyda ni gyda cyntaf i felyn ydy uh, restre caeedig gyda dim ond un enw ar y rester. Dyna, dyna beth i'n cynnig ar un y bryd ar gyfer San Stefan a dyna beth i'n cynnig gyda dau dreian o'r seddi ar un y bryd mm-hmm. yn Senedd Cymru. Ac nawr i ni'n symud tuag at system sydd ar sail PR cant y cant. A nid yn unig hynny, ond hefyd sydd yn mynd i sicrhau yn bendant oherwydd yr ymrwymiad i cwotau uh, strydydol, balans rhywedd, fel bod yn senedd ni yn gynrychliadol, nid yn unig, in, in, nid yn unig o ran y pleidiau, o, o, ond o ran rhywedd, a fel cam cyntaf tuag at sicrhau um, uh, uh, cynrychiolaeth yn yr ystyr eu hangaf y bosib. Felly, dwi'n gwybod mae yna diedd gyda ni yng Nghymru edrych ar y pethau ni'n anghyd un o gyda nhw neu ddim coed yn um, mor uh, gryf o'i plaid, ond gadwn ni ddathlu y cam bras ymlaen fy, fy nyn. Ie, yeah, wrth gwrs, ni ar y record yn y plaid ni, um, dyn ni wedi cefnogi um, uh, STV, wedi'n credu uh, RC iddyn er, er, nhw cofleidio fe yn y wyriniaeth y werddon canlynedd yn ôl, a, 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 a dyna fi dde, a, ein uh, egwyddorion ni, dyn ni wedi gweud hynny. Ond, wrth gwrs, mae rhaid erbyn, pan ych chi yn cydweithio rhwng pleidiau, mae rhaid cyfyddawdu er mwyn symud Cymru mlaen. Chi ddim yn mynd i gael uh, cwbl lot mewn un cam, chi ddim yn mynd i gael popeth i chi mwyn, ond trwy cydweithio, mae modd symud Cymru i'r cyfeiriad uh, 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 um, positif. Um, Gad i ni ddathlu hynny, achos mae yn wirioneddol uh, uh, cyffrois y dydy gwir, beth i ni uh, wedi medru cyflawni uh, trwy cydweithio o ran diwygion senedd. Um, let's, um, let's celebrate, I think, um, the huge progress that, that we're going to make with our democracy here in, in Wales. We're getting rid of a completely unfair, outmoded system called First Past the Post, which has... Uh, yeah, uh, a closed list of what with, with only one candidate on, on it, both the Westminster elections at the moment for two thirds of the Senate elections, and we're replacing that with a system based a hundred percent on proportional representation, and uh, so that is something that we should celebrate. Secondly, um, we're going to do it in a way which uh, uh, guarantees a a, 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 a a Senate which is not just representative in political terms, but also in social terms, by ensuring uh, a 50-50 uh, representation in, uh, um, through a, a, a gender-balanced uh, Senedd, and also we are committed to exploring how we can ensure even wider representation. So I think there are huge benefits. Look, we are on the record as a, as a party historically, uh, and we remain committed uh, to supporting a- a- SDV. I think we've probably supported it for 100 years since it was first introduced in the Republic of I- Ireland. But part of working together uh, it means accepting that you're not going to get everything that you want and we're not going to make, uh, we, we, we're not going to uh, achieve everything in one go necessarily. But let's celebrate the fact that we are going to make a huge step forward for our democracy, giving our currently underpowered Senedd, the tools and the capacity to, to do the job and making it a much more representative Senedd 
uh, than uh, we've been able to be uh, hitherto. And uh, let's celebrate those positives while obviously continuing the discussion and the democratic debate about how we can continue to improve our democracy further. Dear Adam, dear Catherine, uh, Drow e. Adrian Masters. Thank you both. Um, uh, can I ask you um, uh, uh, about the possible, uh, well, it's, whether it's an unintended consequence or the intended consequence of, your, uh, of the measures that you've announced today? Um, it will inevitably, won't it, um, deprive some people in those communities that you're trying to protect, it'll deprive them of their livelihoods. Is that inevitable? And what are you doing to help them? Well, uh, Adrian, I don't probably agree with the basic premise. Uh, I was very careful to say, and I heard Adam repeat it, that we recognise the importance of tourism in many parts uh, of Wales and in many, many parts of Wales. Uh, second, uh, sorry, holiday lets uh, are a very uh, positive part of that local economy. The problem is, is that if you're not careful, you undermine the basis of that success because you over-concentrate second home and holiday let ownership, which means that the things that make those places attractive for people to visit uh, no longer exist. You have villages where people don't live all year round. You have communities that don't operate as communities. Those are the reasons why people come uh, and visit those parts of Wales. What we will do in a carefully calibrated way, giving local authorities the powers where there are problems to be solved, but to focus them in that way, not only will it, I think, make those communities stronger, and sustain them into the future. But in doing so, we will also sustain the reasons why people come to Wales in the first place. And you know, the Welsh Government's policy for tourism is sustainable tourism, not tourism that overwhelms the things that make it a success in the first place. Yeah, and I, I think the dilemma that is at the heart of your question, Adrian, really is it isn't the unique question for us in Wales, isn't it? I mean, uh, even indeed, it's something that uh, other parts of the UK now are, are, are grappling with, and uh, you know, the even the uh, the Westminster government uh, has had to recognise the pressures that uh, communities with, within England are also facing as a, res, as a result of the, of the same phenomenon. So they're on the same trajectory, though we are in, in advance of them considerably in terms of the, the, the impact of, of our proposals. Uh, and it's something we see right across Europe, isn't it? You know, so I think it's always about balance. Uh, uh, yes, I think a, 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 a vibrant tourism sector, which is contributing positively to the to the local economy in a myriad of ways, through employment uh, 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 and in other ways, absolutely. But that cannot be at the expense of the viability of the, of those communities. You know, if people can't live in 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 their own community anymore, then I I, I think even uh, people within the tourism sector would recognise that that is not sustainable in any sense. Uh, and, and really, that's what's driving uh, uh, these uh, these policies is a recognition that we have come to a point where we have to act uh, to, uh, to 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 sustain and and and, uh, and protect those, those those communities. Otherwise, as the first minister said, um, you know, the, it will be impossible uh, ultimately even to sustain the tourism sector because those communities uh, won't be able to to have a future. So I, I think. Um, Clearly, in everything, you always want to get a strike a, a, a balance. But here, I believe we now have to act and act uh, with urgency and uh, with focus because we've reached a point where um, you know the, commun the communities in question, I, I think, um, uh, you know, uh, they, they've reached a crisis point in terms of the availability of local housing, and I think it's the right thing uh, for. The government of Wales, uh, together with Plaid Cymru, supported to act in the way that we've described. And what about the other side of the equation, the housing supply? The Conservatives say that you're not addressing the um, uh, the supply problem uh, with with the same urgency. They say that uh, the Welsh government's only um, uh, building six thousand homes a year, and twelve thousand need need to be built. Well, that would be 
to uh, provide a very partial answer. The supply side is really important. Uh, I said in uh, my original statement about the 20,000 affordable homes for social rent, low carbon homes, the highest standard of housing in Wales that we will build during the Senate term. And that's the largest number that will ever have been built for that purpose in any Senate term. But that is only one strand in what we are doing to increase the supply of housing. Uh, in the Duvod pilot area, for example, we have changed the rules on the home buy system to make it more available to people who live in those communities where housing is under pressure. And we have seen already the first examples coming forward of that scheme now being used in that part of Wales. And we are making major investments on bringing empty properties back into use. In the last financial year, we provided £24.5 million to those local authorities in the areas where the housing pressures we've just described are at their most acute to enable them to bring hundreds of homes back into use for local people. So in Pembrokeshire, for example, one of the beneficiaries of that money, nearly 100 homes previously uh, used for uh, military personnel, no longer needed for that purpose, but needing significant upgrading and improvement to make them permanent homes for local people, nearly 100 homes as a result of uh, that investment being made available uh, locally. Now, we are providing £60 million over the next three years for exactly that purpose, together with £43 million for interest-free loans to local uh, government to bring those properties back into habitable use. And that'll be a circulating fund. So as the money does the job it wants to, and money begins to flow into local authorities through the rental income they'll then be able to uh, acquire, then that money will recirculate to do that job for more properties and in the lives of more people in those local communities. So I understand there's a job that uh, the opposition party has to, uh, to carry out, but this is a very, very partial and incomplete account of the work that we have jointly agreed to carry out in order to increase the supply of affordable properties in those areas. Uh, and I referred to Adrian, didn't uh, deny my remarks to the uh, t to the, the next phase of the work, uh, the looking at the white paper, which will be looking at the, uh, the housing crisis more, more broadly uh, um, uh, throughout uh, the whole of Wales, not just in the communities that we've been principally focusing on uh, today. Um, and also the work of uh, Enos, the, the national construction company, in doing precisely what was at the heart of your question, which is accelerating uh, the provision of, of affordable uh, housing. The question of supply, uh, simply building uh, more houses is not an answer if those houses are not within the reach of local people. So if, if we build houses which are too expensive for uh, for uh, young people uh, in their communities to buy, then that isn't a partial answer. And, you know, implicit in the Conservatives' position often is if we leave it to the market, then everything will be fine. Well, that, that clearly has not worked. It hasn't worked for generations. And, and that's why the kind of approach which we presented uh, here, which is a deliberately interventionist one, I think marks uh, uh, both our parties out from uh, the kind of uh, uh, proposition which the Tory party represents, which is if, if government just gets out of the way, leave it to the market, then it'll solve all our, our housing problems. Well, if we believe that, uh, then I'm, I'm afraid the housing crisis will not just persist, it will accentuate, and neither Plaid Cymru uh, nor the Welsh government are prepared to allow that to happen. And in, in that context, I should have mentioned in my answer to Adrian, one of the strands in the package we put together today, today which I'm very keen to see pursued. So uh, when I first came to Cardiff a very long time ago, it was absolutely ordinary for someone to buy a, a house using a local authority mortgage from Cardiff City Council. Uh, indeed, back in the late 70s and early 80s, 16% of all properties bought by a mortgage across the United Kingdom came through local authority mortgages. And they were very targeted. They were targeted on first-time buyers and they were targeted at people with affordability issues. So whereas a typical uh, bank or building society mortgage would be at 90%, local authorities were able to offer 97% 
mortgages. They were able to offer them over a longer term to make them more affordable. Now, Mrs. Thatcher arrived, she passed a law that made it much more difficult for local authorities to do that, and that system withered because, as Adam said, of an ideological belief that the private market is always better than public provision. Now, I want us to revisit uh, and to use the experience and more recent experience as well, where local authorities were able temporarily to offer mortgages around the 2008 uh, global financial uh, crash. I think there's something in that that we can revisit here in Wales in order to make the issue of supply and affordability to be tackled together. Sorry, Adrian, I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, over to Ruth. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Over to Ruth Mozalski at Wales Online. Hi, both. Um, you've announced there are three new planning classes um, by the end of this summer, I believe. Can you give us a bit more detail on that? Is that going to be for just new properties or existing ones? Is How will this cap that you're saying councils will be able to um, bring in work? Um, and anyone that's dealt with the planning authority recently will know how big the queues are and the delays can be. Are you putting more money into councils so that these, these planning authorities can actually deal with what I imagine would be quite a big influx of um, applications? So uh, you're right, uh, Ruth, that these are powers that are being provided to local authorities. They will be for local authorities to decide whether or not they want to make use uh, of them. And we will, and I know the minister, Julie James, responsible, has already been discussing that one local authority provides some additional help in the initial stages to make sure that local government uh, officers get familiar with what is required and the burden of proof that they would need to establish in order to make use of these powers. So uh, I don't expect myself that to be you know, a permanent addition to local authority resources from the Welsh Government. But we recognise that when there are new powers and you're having to do things for the first time, then that will be more resource intensive and we're happy to think about offering local authorities some additional help while they are in that phase. What will happen will be is that a local authority who believes that there is a particular area for them to define, could be the whole local authority, could be a subset of the local authority, is under such pressure that when properties come onto the market, uh, they need to be treated in a different way to give local people a fair chance of acquiring those properties. They will be able to use changes to the planning regime uh, to give effect uh, to that outcome. Now, they will have to be able to demonstrate that those pressures are genuine because there's quite a high hurdle the councils have to pass uh, in order to be able to um, put themselves into the marketplace uh, in that way. But uh, we're confident that we have the means of doing it, that the powers necessary are powers that the Welsh Government holds that local authorities are the best placed people to make those cases because these are circumstances that happen in sometimes quite distinct localities. And it will become one of the strands. I think you'll find that we've outlined at least eight different measures today that come together as a package to make the difference we want to make. And in using this, this strand in the package, local authorities will need to assemble the evidence and then use the powers they will now have available to them. And, and there, are, um, there are two uh, implications uh, which flow uh, really from this, aren't there? One is if a local authority does avail themselves of the facility that uh, the First Minister has referred to, uh, then uh, by making it ne necessary for a uh, a, a planning consent for to change uh, use effectively to uh, a second home from a primary residence that, that itself has a has a, has a self limiting uh, limiting effect uh, on uh, the numbers of second homes within an area, and uh, the local authority could decide uh, to set effectively a, 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 a ceiling uh, within uh, the the area the the, the cap. Uh, uh, in terms of the numbers of or proportion of 
uh, of hol- of uh, second homes within its within its area. So uh, this is a very, this is a very significant, and in the context of the UK, certainly a very uh, uh, path breaking uh, development, uh, which I'm sure uh, will be uh, you know add considerably uh, to the toolbox available to localities and local authorities in addressing uh, the housing crisis that many of them are facing. Thanks, Ruth. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a hello. Uh, sorry, Prince Minister. Just, just to follow on from Catherine's question as well, can you just clarify? You, there wasn't an explicit answer, I don't think, when Catherine asked you, do you plan on staying on as First Minister? Could you answer that one for us? Uh, no, okay. There are no change to the plans, uh, Ruth, that I announced originally back in 2018 when I stood for leadership of the Labour Party, and which I have answered, uh, I should think, with astonishing regularity uh, ever since. I'm sorry that the answer my plans haven't changed, isn't particularly newsworthy, uh, but it remains the case today. But thank you very thank much. Uh, Drawi Howard Griffith, uh, BBC. My first question, you both mentioned this idea that there are too many holiday uh, homes and second homes in parts of Wales. So how much is too much? Can you put a figure on it? And by implication, are there areas of North and West Wales where you think actually there aren't too many at the moment? Well, um, I think it, it, it obviously will be for uh, local uh, uh, local authorities to uh, to to themselves make an assessment of their current uh, uh, position. Uh, but you know, we we have communities, don't we, where there are. Forty uh, percent of the of, of the homes which are uh, currently um, holiday let or sec- second homes, and you know that is put is it putting us up with some of the uh, those areas of Europe that are uh, you know in, in, amongst the highest uh, levels of um, uh, of pressure from uh, from second homes, and so you know it's not it's not sustainable to have uh, uh, that level. Uh, of ownership of uh, second homes, uh, based on the experience of communities right throughout uh, throughout Europe, but what we're doing here is giving local communities the right to decide uh, whether uh, they want to avail themselves of these power powers in order uh, to create a situation where young people in those communities are able to stay in those communities where housing becomes affordable uh, again uh, for local uh, young people. And it's absolutely the right thing to do, given uh, the the levels uh, of of second homes that I've referred to, which, you know, are now uh, happening in many, many parts of the communities in question. Yeah, how it's because uh, the issue on the ground is complex and varies that the, we have put together a package of measures that are calibrated and can be deployed locally. See, in Cardiff, for example, the Cardiff economy uh, revolves quite a lot around people who live in Cardiff during the working week and may go back to uh, live elsewhere at the weekend. In that sense, the home that they have in Cardiff uh, is an important part of that, the way that local economy operates. That is very different in some of the communities we've been talking about uh, on the, the north and uh, southwest of Wales. That's why many of these powers are powers available to local authorities, the people closest to the ground, best able to make an estimate, even within the local authority. Circumstances will vary from one part to another. And that's why offering you a blanket figure uh, wouldn't make much sense. They've got to be locally assessed, and the powers that we have provided allows that local response then to be drawn together. Uh, Diolch, uh, secondly, you've spoken a lot about the supply of homes. You've not really addressed the demand that there is for people, particularly this time of year, to make use of holiday homes and second homes. Is it the right thing to go and stay in a holiday home or a second home in North or West Wales? And for transparency, have either of you ever made use of a second home or a holiday let in North or West Wales? Well, the answer to the second part uh, of your question is yes, uh, definitely. I was brought up going to Kiln Park uh, in Tenby for our fortnight's holiday. So uh, quite certainly I have and over many uh, years in in that way. 
This is not an attack. And do you still make use of a second home in Wales? Uh, I don't have a second home in the in the terms that we are talking about it today. Uh, no. Uh, but this is not in any case an attack on people who come to Wales. I think the, almost the very first thing I said uh, in the press conference was to say that we go on welcoming people to Wales. We want people to visit Wales. We want people to come and be part of our visitor economy. But we have ambitions for that economy, which is to extend the season so that not everybody arrives in one six-week period, to spread uh, the impact of tourism as well. There are so many fantastic places in Wales who don't have the level of visitors that our hotspots uh, do. So this is not at all, never has been motivated by a belief that people shouldn't be coming uh, to Wales. It's about how we deal with people's wish to come to Wales in a way that doesn't undermine the reasons that they come here in the first place. Yes, again, you know, it's about balance, isn't it? I mean, I, yes, of course, I, I, I've stayed uh, in in hotels, in bed and breakfasts, and, and uh, yes, in holiday lets in Wales, as in other parts of, of the world, uh, as I'm sure you have as well. Um, it, it isn't about saying that that is wrong. Uh, absolutely not. It's about it's about getting balance for these communities and giving them the the ability to to secure. Uh, a future for for the community and for the young young people by making sure that communities aren't overwhelmed by the sheer scale uh, of uh, the numbers of second second homes. You know, you reach a tipping point, don't you, where uh, people are priced out of the market com com completely, uh, and uh, and where there is no sustainability. And under those circumstances, the right thing to do then is in a democratic society is for governments to in intervene, to restore balance, to, to, to give those com communities the basis, the tools that they need in order to ensure that their local young people uh, can afford to live and uh, stay and work in, in their, their communities, including working actually in, in, in a local tourism sector, um, but a local tourism sector that is contributing positively uh, in a balanced way, uh, including through through holiday lets and, and all the other different forms of accommodation, but not reaching the point where it's overwhelming the simple ability of that of that community to prov to provide a future uh, for its young people because its young people can't afford to to live there anymore. Hello, uh, Jacobaur. Over to Lee Jones at the National. Bonjour, um, I wanted to ask how the new measures work alongside uh, legislation like the Delayed Renting Homes Wales Act to ensure affordability in the rental market throughout Wales beyond tourist areas and will rent caps be a consideration? Uh, well, I think you've heard Adam say already that these measures have to be seen in the wider context of the measures that we are taking. Uh, to make private sector rented properties particularly uh, of a better standard uh, and to address affordability issues there too. Uh, the implementation of the Renting Homes Wales Act will be the most significant set of changes made uh, in that field during the history of devolution. Uh, so yes, everything that we've said today has to be seen against that wider uh, backcloth and then Adam has already referred to further actions to which we are committed in NOS, uh, the company that we are committed to uh, developing, and the further white paper that we will uh, bring about. So, uh, Lee, you, you are quite right to point to the fact that there is a wider context beyond the focus of today, which is about those short-term holiday lets and the wider availability of good standard properties for rent that people then use as their long-term accommodation. Yeah, no, th thanks for your question, uh, Lee. And, you know, completely right, I think, to uh, to underline that uh, the announcements that we've made today are part of a much bigger context. 
and uh, you know, the, the broad context really is that th there are no market solutions uh, to the housing crisis. Uh, it, it's 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 leaving things to the market and deregulating ho housing uh, that has, has produced the crisis. And so um, uh, those those broader uh, questions um, are going to be at the heart of a white paper. And so that uh, in the cooperation agreement, we've already flagged up that. Uh, uh, Issues around uh, the question of rent control, of intervening in the private rental sector. Uh, I think the, these are, are absolutely uh, key questions. When we see, in, even before the, the current cost of living crisis, um, but even more so now with the, the very, very high increases that we're seeing in uh, in private rental levels, with Wales seeing some of the highest in, in increases in the UK. Um, we've, I think, that's a discussion. That we need to have and we will be having in the context of uh, the white uh, uh, paper and these broader questions ab about how uh, we uh, respond nationally not just in uh, communities that are facing the, the crisis of second homes housing crisis is a national uh, crisis it presents itself in in different ways in different communities um, but uh, essentially it is it is a it's a connected crisis the, the solutions aren't going to come from the, the, the market and therefore we need to show uh, leadership uh, at, a, a, at a national level and we're committed uh, to focusing on some of those broader questions and introducing the same kind of radicalism uh, that have been at the heart of the proposals um, that we've set out today. Back to you, Lee. Uh, and uh, Winnie Dog. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you don't have any second homes in the terms that we're talking about today. Are you able to uh, expand on which context you do own additional properties? And in the interest of fairness, uh, the same question for you as well, Mr. Price. Uh, yes, uh, of course. So under the terms of the existing legislation and the legislation we have today, it's not counted as a second home if you have somewhere that you can't occupy. Uh, the year round, people will be very familiar listening to this. You know, if you've got a caravan, uh, you can occupy it between March and October, and then you can't occupy it the rest of the year. Uh, I have had, or our family has had, I think it'll be 27 years uh, this year, uh, a chalet in Pembrokeshire, which is operated on the same terms. You can occupy it some of the year, and then you can't the rest of the year. So when we say that local authorities can charge a premium on second homes, those sorts of properties that you can't occupy all year round have always been exempt uh, from that regime uh, and nothing that we are proposing today would alter that. So under the terms that we discussed today, I don't have anywhere, but I'm very pleased to say that I have got somewhere where I'm able to go and was there this weekend and hope to be there quite a bit more uh, over this summer. Uh um, and like the First Minister, obviously, I uh, I don't represent a, a Cardiff constituency, so I, I live and work in two places, and uh, I have uh, a house in my constituency, uh, and I, I also have a, a house uh, here in Cardiff. I look forward to streamlining my life uh, when I leave politics, but uh, as long as I am uh, live and work in two places, then I will have uh, those two homes. Adam Dierkwoud, uh, and finally for today, to Tom Magna at Carers World Lives. Thank you very much indeed, First Minister. <clears throat> Can I take you on to the subject of help? <clears throat> Excuse me. Some five months ago, you committed £4.5 million to investigate and learn from hospital acquired COVID infections in Wales, starting with sending 13,000 letters out to people affected. These were due to go out last month. Have they gone out? And given that COVID is on the rise again, doesn't waiting five months to get started amount to COVID complacency? Uh, well, first of all, Tom, it's an important point you make about the rise of coronavirus again here in Wales. Uh, the numbers are significant and the impact on our hospital sector is now once again very real with a rapid rise of people in a hospital bed and indeed rises in the number of people in critical care as well. And part of that does explain why it does take time uh, to do things because the health service 
has been under sustained pressure over the whole of the time since that money was made available. We are asking it to do an enormous amount in the here and now with people who need treatment today. And while I know local authorities have been uh, increasing the resources that they've uh, got available, improving the systems that they've got to look retrospectively uh, at those really important cases, they also have to focus on people who need treatment here uh, today. And there's a balance to be struck there as well. And it does take time for recruitment to happen and for systems to be put in place. Uh, the letters are sent out by those local health boards, not by the Welsh Government and certainly not by me. So uh, I'm afraid I don't have in my head the extent to which they have been issued. Uh, but it will remain a very important part uh, of the additional work that we need to do in Wales to make sure that people who are looking for answers as to what happened in their own cases or the cases of people who were close to them, that they get better answers and more consistent answers to those questions wherever they live in Wales. Probably not a question for Adam, because it was uh, a question for the Welsh happy Government. For, uh, happy for you, Adam Price, to join in uh, on that before I ask my second, if you something you'd like to say. Uh, yeah, well, um, obviously the, the question of a, of a, of a Wales-only COVID inquiry is a point of uh, difference between uh, my party and uh, the Welsh Government. I mean, just, just to... <laughs> uh, Following some discussion, uh, I think over the weekend we just approved that uh, just because we we agree in many many important areas doesn't mean that we uh, we don't still have important uh, 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 disagreements. Uh, and you know, it's still our view that uh, you know the important questions that you raise would be better ad ad addressed uh, through having a Wales specific uh, COVID inquiry. And that uh, we, we we've yet to hear anything which has persuaded us uh, otherwise. Thank you for that. This uh, second question is definitely for both of you. Um, doesn't all this issue, uh, even accepting staff shortages, doesn't this raise doubts over trust in the Welsh Government with, by all accounts, in the wider picture, infections in NHS hospitals in Wales seemingly out of control, according to some people. In light of that, and I stand to be corrected, but why doesn't such a critical health issue not appear front and centre of your cooperation agreement? Well, first of all, Tom, the idea that infections are out of control in much hospitals uh, simply doesn't reflect the reality. Coronavirus has been out of control in the community at various points with very, very rapid rises. And we're seeing another upswing because of uh, Omicron 2.4, 2.5 and so on. And, it, you know, as night follows day, when there are rising levels of coronavirus transmission in the community. This is a virus that then gets into all those other places where we work so hard to try to keep it at bay, whether that's care homes or hospitals or prisons or any other closed setting. But every day, the health service works incredibly hard to try to make sure that it does everything it can to deal with that incoming tide and to respond to it with all the things that the health service has learned over many years in dealing with acquired uh, infections. So the, um, you know, this is not a say that this is easy. That is not a say that uh, we, a we are able to turn back the tide in a canute like way, but that notion that the health service doesn't you know, work incredibly hard in order to be able to do that. I was speaking to a nurse just this weekend who's back wearing masks and other protective equipment over a 12 hour shift. She was telling me, she knows, she said, it's the right thing to do because of the rising numbers. And we know we have to do it. But you know, those are really difficult working conditions. And I really think once in a while, we should just stand back and give some credit to people who work so hard to try to keep uh, people safe in that hospital setting. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is a, an agreement, a cooperation agreement over 47 different topics that we uh, worked hard to thrash out uh, between us. As Adam said, you know, we don't agree on everything. Uh, and the cooperation agreement 
are those things to which we are jointly committed and want to achieve together over this end term. Uh, yes, I mean, I, I think um, it, clearly uh, we we had very very wide ranging discussions, Tom, in come in arriving at um, these areas where we were able to pos uh, where it was possible for us to come to agreement. I, I don't think you would expect me uh, to betray the confidence of of those negotiations in referring to to areas where we weren't able to uh, come to ag agreement, but. Uh, Ultimately, uh, you know the the process is is that you 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 have to uh, ultimately uh, f focus on the common ground uh, where it is possible to uh, to make progress for the people of Wales because you're able to identify those areas where you share uh, a vision and a set of uh, um, um, a set of policies and just because you're not able to agree on everything doesn't mean that should stop you agreeing in those areas where you are able to make uh, progress. So um, by its very nature, uh, you know, the agreement wasn't going to cover ev everything and where there, there still remains legitimate, though I make no apology for the, for the fact that we have civil disagreements. Maybe some people would like me to be angry and aggressive. I don't think that does politics any good. We can have civil, respectful disagreement uh, in the area that I just referred to and in, and in, and in other areas. And uh, and we will continue uh, to work together in, in, in the areas of the co cooperation agreement, and we'll continue to have uh, legitimate disagreement in in those uh, in those other areas uh, as well. And we'll continue to scrutinise the Welsh government uh, appropriately. And I look forward, Tom. I think we, you and I are having a, a conversation. You asked me in the last press conference whether uh, we did. So there we are politician that keeps a promise, <laughs> Tom. And, uh, yeah, and thank way, you. I'd just like to pay tribute because I have an experience in re referring to the COVID uh, uh, framework that, uh, you know, uh, uh, my, uh, the care home that looks after my father, you know, incredibly impressed by the work that they've, they've put in place, not just in terms of uh, pre uh, preventing COVID infection, but you know, more generally in the care that they provided uh, for my uh, father, but uh, I look forward to discussing these and other issues with you, Tom, uh, in due course. Tom, thank you very much as ever. Thank you.